Now you know that in Byzantine times, really up to the Reformation, you often saw maps in which Jerusalem was literally the center of the world. This book is about multiple identities of great conquerors and whores and empresses and fascinating characters of empire, of control, of possession, of power. The two great destructions of Jerusalem in 586 BC with Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians, and um, 70 with Titus, were probably the most important things in making Jerusalem what it is today, making it the holy city. And what does it mean when you say holy city? This is the place where on earth, this is the perfect place, the prime place, where, where God can encounter man, where man can encounter God. In Jerusalem, the myths are as powerful as the facts. Many of the myths are, in fact, historically wrong. Almost certainly, the Via Dolorosa, along which millions of Christian pilgrims walk every year, is almost certainly historically the wrong route for Jesus. The thing about David is like everything in Jerusalem, but especially David and Solomon, um, that there's virtually no evidence that Solomon existed. We know that David was a historical character, but actually but that's pretty much all we know. In the city of David, the original city of Jerusalem, there's very little. David's kingdom was probably a confederation of tribes. In modern times, the great families of Jerusalem have been Arab families. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is still opened every day by one of the Naseba family. They've done that at least since Saladin. They claim longer. The Jews almost certainly built the first temple on, the, on a Canaanite shrine. Jesus, very consciously, studied the Jewish scriptures, was a practicing Jew, Muhammad, but he certainly was very, very uh, familiar with both the Christian and the Jewish prophets, adapting, adopting, commandeering um, the holiness that was already there. And that's what all the religions have done throughout time. And that's why there are three religions in Jerusalem. The first 300 years of Christianity, Jerusalem wasn't very important to the Christians. The key moments in Muslim history, Jerusalem was a ruin, abandoned with only a thousand people living in it. People who, who believe the Bible is, a fundament, is fundamentally the divine word of God or the Quran. Those people are increasing in numbers. Many people who go to Jerusalem are hugely disappointed by Jerusalem. And when people arrive, they're expecting a white marble city, pristine, towers rising towards the clouds. It's, it's exquisite, it's poetical, it's aesthetic, it's sacred, it's wonderful, it's gripping, it's, it's compelling, um, it's idiosyncratic, but it's also the messiest, noisiest, angriest, most awkward, most furious, uh, most chaotic, dusty, hot, um, crazy city in the whole world. So it's no wonder that many pilgrims go there.